Hey everyone, Rainbow Rage here with another Inkscape tutorial. Today I want to talk to you about a neat trick I discovered to get a nice taper in your paths. This is geared a bit more towards advanced users who've done a few vectors before. I'm going to be using my old Colgate vector here as an example. And you'll see all the ends of my paths are rounded off and not tapered properly. Uh, in my stroke and fill video, I showed that you can use the convert to path uh, feature to turn your strokes into paths and then manually taper them off. If you're using the Inkscape 0.49 nightly build, uh, you have power strokes available. Those are a little unstable and finicky. Um, also not ideal. Uh, this, this, this solution also isn't ideal, but it's a cool thing you can do even with the, the older version of Inkscape. Uh, so what, what it's going to uh, be doing is we're using the pattern along path path effect. Uh, we're using this in conjunction with the align and distribute dialog. So go and check out my video for that if you don't know how it works. First I'll show you a demo of this uh, path effect off of the pony just to show you what goes on. So I'm going to draw my path. And oh, we're not there yet. And draw my path and go to path, path effect editor. And that'll bring up your path effect editor here. Uh, just drop down menu here, select pattern along path, hit add, and you'll get this thing. You want pattern source, and it'll give you this uh, cool little. Okay, this isn't that cool. But it'll give you this path here. Now, this is basically what it's, it's going to apply this object to our path. So, we're going to use align, it, align and distribute to make it a nice box. Um, but what happens if we apply a stroke, then it's actually going to be a stroke all, all the way around and be hollow in the inside, because this is actually an object that's been applied along a path. So we want to use the fill color and have this and leave the stroke blank. And to taper it off, you can edit this green path just like you would any other path. You just add another node, stretch it out, and there's your taper. Uh, for fine tuning, use the align distribute uh, distribute selected nodes vertically here to make sure that that point is directly in the center. And you can make these two uh, nodes here. Uh, you make them smooth nodes so that it's a smooth transition from the flat part into where it tapers off. And you're usually going to want to stretch these out a bit. And there's a nice taper. And you can even bend that and it'll still taper off properly. It's pretty neat. All right, let's see it in action. So uh, another way you can do this uh, is you can have it automatically apply this effect. Um, if you go up uh, with the, path, the uh, Bezier uh, curve tool selected here, or the pen tool if you prefer to call it that, you go up to the top bar here so you see shape, there's a drop down menu, Go select triangle in. A any of these will work, but triangle in, uh, I find, works best. Uh, and so now you see when I create my stroke, it's already been applied where it's thicker at one end and it tapers off to an en another end here. We need to do some fine tuning still, though. So you're going to go once again, go hit pattern source, edit on canvas. Now, when you click this, if you can't find that green path, it's because it always starts off up here in the top left corner of your page. Uh, so if you can't find it, go find your page and head out to the top left corner of it. And that's where you're going to find your path. So I'm going to go closer down here and I'll, you'll see why in a second. But first I want to make my box. So here we go. Use the line of history to quickly make that together. And there's our box. Now the reason we're down here is the width of our stroke here is going to be the same width 
as this box down here because what we're doing is applying this object to the stroke so you want to have this be this all right so you want to have this be the same thickness as the stroke we want so stretch that out I'm going to make this just a bit longer so it's easier to see what's going on so you adjust the points here on the end to move the taper to where you want it and about there seems right at least to me make these smooth and then bring it out a bit. And there you have your nice taper here. Now going on to the next stroke, once you already have one, there's a shortcut you can take on the future ones. So throw our next one down. I'll just do this real quick. And instead of recreating the whole thing all over again, we can just go to our old stroke, hit copy path, go back to our new stroke, paste path and there you go you have the path is now the same width as your old one and it has the same taper now sometimes you're going to want to edit the taper a bit like in this case i think i do so you can just hit edit on canvas again and this we want it to taper off a little a little later so i'm going to bring that closer and then bring these in and that's a good taper for that. So you can make all your lines with nice consistent stroke width, clean tapers uh, very quickly. And then they're still uh, just strokes. So you can move your paths around and change it uh, really easily as well. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll explain a bit what, what the buttons here in your dialogue do, just in case you're interested in... Uh, and want to go a bit deeper because this is a pretty powerful tool uh, so once again your pattern source edit on canvas will show you the path to, to work with copy path and paste path we've already seen link to path uh, will honestly I don't I don't not hugely familiar with this I haven't used it yet um, It'll link it to a path, I suppose. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, play with it. See what it does. And let me know. Um, pattern copies. So single stretch is what you're going to be using most of the time. And what that's going to do is it's going to take this, uh, this uh, ob your green path here, which is the pattern, and it's going to apply it once to the entire path and then stretch it out so it fills the whole thing up. If it's just regular single, it's going to apply it once but it's going to be the exact same size as uh, the original path. If you have one repeated, it's going to keep it the same size and repeat it as many times as it can fit on the path. Repeated stretched will also, will also repeat it as many times as it can, but it's going to stretch it out a bit so that it fills the entire thing up. Uh, when you go to width, it's the width will be the same width as the width of the stroke is the same width as your green path here, but uh, this uh, it's relative to this uh, width ratio. So one to one, it'll keep it the same. But let's see if it's, you put a two in the width, now it's going to be twice as thick. Uh, remember, this is a relative value, not an absolute value. Uh, so you have to be careful uh, with working with that. Width in units of length now applies the width uh, based on how long the stroke is. So you see I make it longer, it's going to get thicker. As I make it shorter, it's going to uh, get thinner. Spacing, normal offset, tangential offset, and uh, while you're offset and spacing controls, uh, those are going to affect it if uh, you, for example, have it on repeated and you want space between them. So now it's going to give it a spacing of 100. Uh, pattern is vertical will um, assume that the pattern is normally it assumes it's a horizontal pattern as in it starts on the left and ends on the right edge uh, but if you say pattern is vertical now it's going to assume it starts on the bottom edge and ends on the top edge if you have a horizontal pattern make sure you don't select that obviously 
Fuse nearby ends. Once again, not too sure what this does. I do know you do not need it if you are just making uh, pony tapers. Uh, but if you want to mess around with it, you find out what it does. Uh, then let me know and uh, more power to you. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff you can actually do with this. Just because this path here, it's it, you You don't just have to do tapers. Um, with ponies, that's all you'll be doing. But if you want to do other cool stuff, you can edit this just like any other path. So I can go in here. And uh, I mean, if, if you are familiar with power strokes, you'll, uh, you'll remember this uh, sort of glitch in there. Uh, but with this tool, it can actually be used for as a pretty cool effect. And you can even... Uh, round it a bit like such i mean it's just a path you can edit however you want stretch this out add more nodes all over the place have this really interesting object going on okay that looks cool yeah i'm, I'm just sort of playing around with it right now but uh you can definitely pull some neat things um by doing this so uh experiment with that and have fun with it um, that's all I have for you on this. Uh, if you have any questions or a suggestion for a future tutorial, let me know. And, uh, once again, I'm, Ram I'm Rainbow Rage. See you next time.